All right, what's up guys? Now today I'm getting to the really cool stuff. I'm getting to functions. Now before I've always coded stuff just globally in the script. And now we're gonna be a bit better about our syntax and we're gonna declare stuff in functions. So you can see here, I wrote a function main and this is pretty much the syntax for a very basic function. The function is the keyword main is the name in this case i'm giving no parameters and then this is the end of the function and in here we're going to write our simple statement hello world okay now if i call this right now it's going to run but oh i need to go to the correct folder okay now if i call this right now it's gonna run, but it's not gonna do anything. Cool, so you see nothing got outputted. Now, it didn't print out hello world because I have to actually explicitly call this function. So if you can see here, this is making the function, but this is actually calling the function. Okay, and you can see because I have this line now, it's, runs this, gets called here, comes back up here, and then calls hello world. And then it printed it out. And that's, that's how it pretty much goes. It will compile all this stuff so it knows function exists, or it knows main exists, but it's not gonna call it until you actually explicitly call the function. And then we can do another case. Let's say we want a function within this function and this would be hello there. And then that's run, that's created, but I need to call it as well. And let's go. All right, cool. So you can see it, it did it again. So it got down here, called main, runs main here, prints hello world. Now it created this function, but didn't call it yet. So that's why I didn't print hello world or hello there just yet. But down to here, I got the foo and came back up. Now printed hello there. Okay, so let's say we want to create a function that has parameters. Circumference. And this is going to take one parameter r. And it's going to be two times pi times r and end. I can get rid of my hello world statement and I can do print line of circumference of five. All right, so now I'm gonna call this. Cool. All right, so a couple things happened here. Now, first I created another function, circumference of r and two times pi times r and now you can see this syntax is a bit weird, right? This isn't being equated to anything. It just printed out this statement of math and that's, that's what got returned. And you can see that in here, it knew that circumference existed even though it's outside. So let's, let's, let's tackle a couple of those questions. So functions always return the last line of the argument. If you want to be explicit, I could call, I can call this X and I can write return x if I wanted something like that. Let's say we had, um, let's say it's not a print, but y equals five. Okay, so if we had this, now it would know to return x, even though this is the last line of the statement, it would know, oh, I want this argument returned explicitly. But if our function's simple or you know that the last line is what you want, then you can just n omit this x equals, this y equals, whatever, and you can just return this last line. Because usually the last line of your code is the argument you want. But let's say there's a lot of complex things going on and the variable isn't on the very last line and you need to call it explicitly. So this is what the return is for. So, you don't have to explicitly call it, but you it's it's also good to to write out x equals this 
return X because that is also cleaner in a way and people can see more what's going on. Okay, another thing. So it main the main function new circumference existed even though it was outside. So this is more looking at scope again. This this main function is global. This circumference function is also global and then we're calling main here. So main knows that circumference exists because they're both in the same script. If this wasn't a different file, that would go, be going into modules and that would be similar to you having to import the module, similar to how we imported plots a couple of videos ago. And then we would then we could call circumference. But even though this is this function is outside this one, you can still call it because they're inside the same script. So this still exists to main and you can call circumference and we're just passing it this variable r. And if I want to be better about this, I can also write r equals five and now I just pass r like that, run it, and we see you got the same value. Okay, now we did the circumference function and we can see circumference is actually a pretty simple line of code. And let's say we didn't want to write all this syntax out, right? This is taking up four lines of code, even though it's really only doing this one line of operation. Well, we can write something simpler. I can write C of R. I can also write circumference, but I'm just gonna call it C of R is equal to two times pi times r. And now this is going to do the same exact thing as our circumference function. Cool. And you can see these both outputted the same thing. So both these functions exist right now. This is still, this function still exists and it's still valid. But this is now called an another function, but this is in its assignment form. This function can also take in parameters, but you can see it's this one line of code, right? Is so if you're doing something like an area function or you're doing some physics equation or in anything along those simple lines of operations, and it really only takes up one line of code because it's this one function, then you can create something like this and this one liner can also be used rather than having to write out all these lines because this is probably used, you would, you would use this whole function block if you had more complex things going on. Okay, and now there's the other form called the anonymous function. Okay, and let's, let's do that. So anonymous function do another print, I'm gonna write map, and I'm gonna call this x, two times pi times x, and then give this a container. All right, now let's look again what happened here. So now this is an anonymous function, this x arrow two times pi times x. And now you can see in all these cases, I've just been doing circumference. But in here, an anonymous function is a function that doesn't have a name. It's just saying that this variable being passed to this operation, do it. And map, what, what this map function is doing is passing this container of arguments to this anonymous function and performing whatever operation. In this case, it's the circumference formula. So you can see if it first passed one, it just did two times pi times one, which is about 6.2. And then it did our, our five case, which we've been doing for all these other ones. And you can see we got the same output. And then it doubled that with 10. Okay, and mainly to point out anonymous functions, sometimes in this language gets mixed up with the assignment form, but these are two different functions. These are two different types. You can see this was an explicit function called C and does this operation, even though it's the same, but this function and this function both exist and they're both explicitly different. And this anonymous function is another type that exists within this map and it does this operation. So this is an anonymous function and this is 
another function in its assignment form, and then this is just a regular old function. Cool. Now, I think I'm going to stop the video for this part here. There's going to be a, a B part to this video where I'm going to go more into writing functions more efficiently. Now that video isn't required or needed to continue on, but it's good for writing better functions. But if you just need to write a function and move on with your life, then you're good with all this. This is fine. The next part is just more how to do stuff more cleanly and how to declare stuff correctly. So I'll see you there.